Okay, well, hello, everybody, and welcome to this interview. My name is Mike Scheibinger, and I'm your Spectra Layers product specialist, and I am here in Madison, Wisconsin, at a place called Virtu Studio. This is my little project studio down here in my home. And over on the other side, 2,000 miles away, we have Rob Hill, who's at his X music studio in Los Angeles. And hi, Rob. Rob's going to tell us all about Spectral Layers, and he's going to show us three different applications that he's done. And we've pre-recorded these videos, and so we'll talk a little bit, and then we'll show the clips, and then we'll come back and make comments, and um, you'll learn a lot. Hope you enjoy this. Now, Rob has really extensive experience working with a lot of big-name artists. Okay, I'll read off a few. We got a Queen, Cypress Hill, Jackson Brown, The Cars, lots of others. And you've also shared the studio with lots of legendary engineers, including Phil Ramone, Elliot Shiner, and Roy Thomas Baker, and also Greg Ladani, who was a, a great producer. And so, um, great times. So, what better way to uh, wrap up the year than by having an interview with... Um, with a good producer out in LA who uses Spectra Layers on the Steinberg platform and um, has a lot of cool stuff to share with us. So like, Rob, when did you first get into Steinberg? Um, I think we were emailing each other back and forth and you said something about version one of Nuendo. Like, when was that? Oh, uh, it's now 20 some odd years yeah. uh, for that. It's an interesting story. My, the, my first experience with, with Steinberg actually was on the Atari platform. <laughs> so uh, I was working with a producer, Dave Williams, who was a drummer. I think he played drums in the OJs for a while, but he was an R&B producer that lived next to me. And uh, he turned me on to uh, Atari on the Cubase. I mean, okay. Cubase on the Atari, sorry. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, that was my first experience with it. And uh, then after that... I, I kind of I, I went away for a while. I was working for East West um, doing the sample library stuff and converting their stuff over to um, Mac and PC based stuff from the Akai Roland libraries to, to more Mac and PC stuff was that was happening. And then I was at, on Cakewalk for a while. And then I came back. I was really I mean, it's a small community. So I think I came back to, to Cubase at like three, five, mm -hmm. I think just before VST 24. Mm -hmm. And I was really connected with the Steinberg North America folks. I was, I was, you know, uh, a lot of friends out there and always out there and so on. And I heard the, the um, rumblings that, hey, you know, these developers who I've later come to find was Wolfgang Kundras and, and Charlie Steinberg were working on a new from the ground up code uh, DAW, which was Nuendo. So mm -hmm. I was like, oh, and it hit all the keys. It's like, oh, yeah, it'll do high sample frequencies and it'll do surround sound out of the box and this yeah, yeah. and that. And then I was like unbelievable so i dug in deep and i got in just as it was it coming into beta before the version one release uh the first nuendo artist was jackson brown wow cool uh greg and i connected and he kind of took me under his wing and and i i was working exclusively with greg for a couple of years there um but he was contracted from dts to do to remix the running on empty record into five one mm -hmm. and that was a really really amazing thing an amazing experience and and being that i was so involved in in nuendo nobody everybody was looking for a solution away from pro tools and nobody you know nobody knew anything about Nuendo or how to use it so i was kind of like i fit in this little box where it's like oh well this is the guy that you need to do these records and it was just you know really a blessing That's you know perfect. to kind of fall into that that's cool. So like before that, did you come up with, uh, did you come up from analog tape world? Were you working in that? Uh, a, yeah, a bit, uh, a bit. I mean, I, I got like my first cassette four track recorder when I was 12 years old with mm -hmm. a Korg DDD one drum machine. And then, uh, yeah, I went to Berkeley for a while and we were doing tape there and, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So I didn't have a whole lot of tape experience, but I did, you know, I, I was a computer guy from the very beginning, sound right. tools before it was Pro Tools and, and then into the mix system before Mix Plus. And then I, did I have a Mix Plus? Yeah, I had I had one of the G3 clones, actually, when Mac still allowed people to, to make non-Mac computers. So right, right. Uh, and then that was the end for me. From that point on, I was all Nuendo all cool. the time. Veteran. So in addition to doing a lot of music, you've you also work a lot on uh commercial multimedia projects television and stuff like that um yeah yeah and nuendo there again is you know 
perfect for that, right? Uh, I, yeah, once again, super fortunate that uh, I'm here at the right place in the right time. And uh, I work for a few post companies, but one in particular keeps me incredibly busy. I've been slammed all day and I still have much more to do tonight uh, uh. called Catalytic Creative out of, uh, out of Los Angeles and just do a lot of promo and commercials and some small sizzles and, and, and uh, short films and so on. But it's, uh, yeah, just a, a lot of stuff. Amazon, Fox, Hallmark Channel, um, HGTV, just it's what it's what pays the majority of the bills these days and allows me to sure. still do music projects and so on uh, that I'm still passionate about, you know, it's like, okay, well, uh, because the music stuff is, has not dried up completely. I still get a lot of music work, but, uh, the post stuff doing that has really, you know, filled in the financial gaps for sure. Yeah. Cool. Well, you know, in that regard, we're lucky to have you here um, at this interview because you have experience in both music, music and, you know, um, commercial media. Right. And so the uh, our Nuendo users will definitely relate. OK, so let's jump right in and watch um, the first clip. And this is uh, noise print based noise reduction. And um, we can just do you have anything you want to say before we kick into it or should we just run it? Uh, no, it's just a series. I believe it's something that's coming up on FX. I'm not even sure of the status of this piece right now. The graphics weren't done, and it was just something that I needed to clean up uh, the dialogue mm -hmm. because I was um, laying it over music beds and effects, which is different than the episodic, just straight dialogue. Cool, cool. Okay, all right. Okay, let's roll the clip, okay? Here we go. In this first clip, I'm working in Steinberg's Nuendo 12, and I'm doing a commercial for an upcoming series on the FX network. As you will see in here, uh, the couple having the dialogue outside of a busy hotel, there's lots and lots of background noise that I kind of need to clean up, so it will sit well with the music bed. What you heard about me? Nothing, just that you're the worst. Says the girl who just stole a blender from a wedding. Oh man, thought it was a food processor. That would be normally fine if it was just for the episodic release and dialogue alone without music and sound effects. But since I am putting it in a commercial, I kind of need to have it to be a little bit more clean so it will still cut through uh, a heavy music bed and sound effects. So the first thing that I'll do is just add a few tracks into Nuendo because um, I know that this is comped from several different performances. So I'm gonna just add three tracks and then I'm going to take each of these individual parts and move them to their own channel within Nuendo so I could isolate them and work on them independently. Next thing, I'm going to actually pull out the tails, the heads and the tails of each of these particular files and see if I can isolate some of that background noise without dialogue in it. So uh, what you heard about me? So I can hear the noise is isolated at the beginning and end of that clip. So now I will actually bounce this to a new file. So any processing I do in Spectral Layers 9 will only be on the new clip and will leave the original clip unadulterated. So now I will go to the audio menu and extensions and I will open up Spectral Layers and it will open up in its own edit window within Nuendo itself. No, I don't have to go to a secondary program. And now I'll play this clip back in the Spectral Layers editor. So uh, what you heard about me? And you can see that the dialogue is in this section here. And I have good isolation of the noise itself at the top of the file. So I will make that selection and then go to the menu and go to noise reduction and register that noise. I'll hit OK. And then I'll select the entire file, everything all together. And I'll go back to the menu and go to noise reduction. And then I'll select my percentage and preview it. It's currently at 60%. Let's see what that sounds like. So, uh, what you heard about me? So, uh, what you heard about me? That may be a little bit too much. Let's take the percentage down to like 46% and see how that sounds. So, uh, what you heard about me? 
to uh, what you heard about me. That sounds pretty good. I want to leave some of the background ambience there so it doesn't sound too foreign when they're standing outside of a busy hotel like that. It would sound weird if it just went to silence. So I hit apply, and then I'll close the dialog box, and then uh, we'll go ahead and go back to the menu and go and make that permanent. So that way that file um, has the spectral layers noise reduction permanently applied to it. So here's the playback of the original. What you heard about me? Nothing, just that you're the worst. Says the girl who just stole a blender from a wedding. And here is my Spectral Layers 9 process noise reduced track. What you heard about me? Nothing, just that you're the worst. Says the girl who just stole a blender from a wedding. So yeah, I took a lot of the background noise out, but I left some of it there. But it gives me a much more options that I could use EQ and compression to really get the dialogue to pop, to sit in the music bed and with the sound effects and make it ready for broadcast. And uh, there it is. Noise print based noise reduction. And I noticed that you were using um, the real time preview functionality. That's brand new in Spectral Layers uh, Pro 9. Um, how do you how do you like that? The real time preview thing? Yeah, it's uh, it's good stuff, actually. Uh, in the earlier versions in seven and eight, you would have to print. And then if it was like a little too much, a little too heavy, the, the, the dialogue got a little too chirpy, you just had mm -hmm. to undo it and then redo it and find that sweet spot. And this just eliminates all of that. So. It eliminate. I know. I know when uh, it in if you are not an experienced Spectral Layers user, then you may not understand how important uh, the real-time preview functionality is. It's a real game changer as far as workflow in Spectral Layers Pro 9. It's so cool. And now the next clip is one that when I first saw it, when you when you delivered it, I looked at it and I thought, this is close to my heart because it's working on acoustic um, guitar repair in Spectral Layers. And we'll talk a little bit about um, acoustic guitar repair after we watch the clip. But now let's just roll it and uh, watch this. This is very cool. Okay, check this out. So in this clip, uh, this is a metal band called Evil Dead that I was working on. We did some acoustic guitar overdubs. And uh, there's some just bleed through. You could hear some things in the acoustic track that I think I'm going to use spectral layers to get rid of. So I'm going to go ahead and double click on this solo, this red acoustic guitar track. Good point out what I'm talking about. So in that, you can hear, I can hear the metronome in the background and I can hear some finger noise, some squeals on the strings that I'm going to try to get rid of. So let me just go to audio menu and extensions and open up the spectral layers editor. And here we see the waveform. We play it back. Okay, let's zoom in. And I can see those metronome clicks that are bleeding from his headphone track right here. Yeah, that's it. You can barely hear it there. That's definitely it. So I'm just going to delete, hit delete a couple of times and move over to the other one here. Select that. Hit delete a couple of times. And we'll listen back. Yeah, that's great. I can not hear the click in those stops anymore, in those rests where the guitar is sustaining out. And 
and I hear the finger noise there of moving positions. So let's try to figure out where that's at. I kind of see it here in the waveform. Yeah, that's it. Let me zoom back out here. Hit delete, hit delete a couple more times, really get it taken out of there. And play it back. There's another one there. So we'll just go ahead and take this whole section and delete, play it back. And here, I'm hearing those metronomes bleeding from the headphones again. So I'll take these sections and loop them in. There's a retardando at the, at the end there. Let me just match this timing a little better. Perfect. Ish. You know, interestingly enough, uh, acoustic guitars for the most part are very bright and, mm -hmm. and dynamic instruments. But when you really get in and crushing the crap out of them with compression and EQ to get it to pop in like a rock mix or so on, those those minor flaws and tweaks and string pulls and and slides and all that stuff just they they exacerbate and just become abrasive and nutty. You know, just trying to get yeah. the proper tone to fit in a rock mix, especially. So that's one thing, you know, just doing what I was doing there. And then, you know, working with older rock star guys that are deaf and have to have the click bashing in their heads. I already mm -hmm. had all of the high end and everything rolled off of that click in mm -hmm. the headphones, but mm -hmm. you could still hear it bleeding through because sure. that's where you're sure. comfortable with it. So uh, we've saved the best for last, I think, but check this out. You're going to love this. Um, we're going to roll on the unmix stems feature okay now this is new inspector layers pro 9 and uh check it out here we go so one thing that really came in handy with spectral layers um during the pandemic during um the i don't know not the early days but say the middle days of the of the pandemic and there was no live shows or anything my friend uh michael and billy had their kind of retro metal band and they did an album with uh legendary metal producer Me bill matoyer and they released the record and then the pandemic hit and they weren't able to play any shows or do anything or get any kind of live action at all so i set them up here in the studio and uh just did like a basic studio live situation did a three camera shoot and studio live here in my live room at studio uh in x music studios here and uh yeah, it came out pretty good, but I'll point out to you what uh, really came in handy with Spectral Layers was the lead vocal and the bleed, because these are all very live vocals. You'll hear as I isolate it, you'll hear all the, the background crosstalk from everybody else playing in the live room. So here we go. Solo this. I tried everything I can to help you So there's obviously a lot of crosstalk in that. So what I will do is I'll bounce that file there. I've already duplicated the track. So I'm just going to bounce it, make a new file, go to audio extensions and spectral layers. 
And now I'm going to go into the layers here and unmix the stems. And this is only a mono vocal only, but it has all the crosstalk of the rest of the band. So I'm actually going to uncheck everything else here and only play, only separate out the vocals here. Just hit OK. It's going to run through the process here. And now it's completed the process. And now I have the two separate files, the vocal and then the rest of the background kind of crosstalk ambient tracks from his vocal mic that were picked up in the live room. So. So how I ended up this way When I fall into this again Pray for me, oh friend So that's pretty cleaned up. It's just really great and easy. Uh, so now I could actually do some, some effects and so on on it. Let me just drag that back to the session here. Just click and hold down. And now the clean version of it's lined up directly where it was. So Spectral Layers just really cleaned it up a lot and allows me to actually kind of tweak out this, this vocal and still have a live vocal performance, but without having all the phase correlation issues with uh, the rest of the background music. And here it is kind of in the mix. I tried everything again to help you understand but there's nothing else to say And this allowed these guys to come in and play a live show and uh, put some content up for on their YouTube and on their social medias during the pandemic when there were no shows or anything happening. And uh, Spectral Layers allowed me to get you know a clean vocal take with a really live with a live vocal in a live room. So, um, you know, that's one thing, one of the major features I really liked about it. Because, I mean, that particular scenario was, it, it's very live, you know, and mm -hmm. I think when we discussed it, you talked about, oh, yeah, you know, setting up a gate or something on that, uh, setting up a gate on that live would have been, you know, catastrophic if it wasn't opening and closing correctly. I would have lost something. I would have lost, you know, something in his, his performance. Yes. If it was just even slightly off. And uh, um, doing it that way, it just, it cleans up the entire uh it's, it was only the mono isolated vocals I explained there. And then I just wanted to get rid of everything else out of there. So when I process stuff, delays, reverbs, I don't get all of that extra garbage and crosstalk clogging up, you know, the, those effects. But yeah. in particular, I can tune now too. If he was to hit a bad note, or uh, tune. Yes. Uh, so the algorithm and so on would not catch all of that background stuff and start jarbling and getting all crazy. So, yeah. Um, yeah. That's cool. I was really impressed by the uh, the the lack of artifacts. I mean, it, it sounded it sounded really clear, uh, really really clean. And you just used the default settings. You didn't even like mess with uh, the thresholds or anything like that, right? Yeah. But once again, I, I wasn't. It wasn't about being super careful in that particular thing because I wanted to. I wanted to be live. I didn't. You know, it, mm -hmm. not as far as the spectral layers processing portion of it, but I those kind of things. I wanted to keep that live vocal take. I didn't want to have to have him come in and overdub or do anything like that. One of the big points here, I think, is that it's so much easier than fiddling around with a gate. I mean, like those uh, those snare crack transients were starting to get really competitive with his voice. And I think in, unless you had the perfect uh, gate on there, it would have been 
it would have been really hard. Uh, you would have had to go in there and automate, um, you know, stuff out. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, like I said, doing it just, it was mostly about doing the effects and so on. Being able to tune was probably the most important thing. I mean, he's really good. He's, he's good at that style of music. And so it's not like he was way off, but just being able to, to, um, go into the the built-in tuning algorithm and so on within Nuendo, just it, it reacts a lot better without having all that crosstalk. And then the whole phase correlation issue with the rest of the instruments in the band and the room and everything that, you know, it it just allows the mix to become much more open and and the phase doesn't start pulling everything back and, and so on back to the center where the where the vocal sits because of, you know, the phase mm. between the crosstalk on the mic. So cool. Uh, last year, I had to do a remake of Girl Can't Help It, um, Little Richard for Miss Maisel on Amazon mm -hmm. because they, they had licensed the song. They had paid for the license on the song. Oh, yes. right. I, I think I know where you're going with this. OK, go ahead. But there was no instrumental of it, so it didn't mm -hmm. exist. And so they were like, hey, could you recreate this and make it sound exactly like the original one? You know, EQ wise, room size, everything like that. You know, can you do this? And I'm like. Absolutely, I can do it. I'm like, why don't you use an instrumental? Like, there isn't one. I'm like, okay, fair enough. So I did it, you know. Uh, I recreated it and brought in a sax player, recreated the sax solo, did the whole thing, and got paid pretty well for it. Cool. But had I used spectral layers and just removed the vocals, it would have been, you know, uh, not yeah. as big of a pay, I guess. Yeah, well, you know, like, if there's one thing that... that um... I like to say about spectral layers, and this goes back to my acoustic guitar thing, is that if you even have like one really important use for it, like, you know, doing the ambience match thing or cleaning up the acoustic guitar or cleaning up the live vocal, like if there's just one thing, right, that that means a lot, then that's worth the price of the program, like right there to me, because nothing else can really touch it, uh, you know, the way it works. Well, yeah, exactly that. I was actually on a laptop and visiting my mother. She had taken ill. So I was in mm. um, rural Pittsburgh area and I got a call to do some commercials. I forget what it was. And I'm like, yeah, I can do this. And I had, you know, I, I had the whole setup there, but the dialogue was really bad. And I'm like, it's like the middle of the night in, in East Coast time. And I'm like, what? Oh, no. And I had, uh, I, it was seven, I guess. And it was uh, Spectral Layers 1, the one that came inside of Nuendo. And I'm like, yeah, this this isn't enough. And immediately right. I, went <laughs> yeah. in, uh, I pulled out the credit card and I bought Spectral Layers Pro and uh, saved the day. And it more than paid for itself that very night. Yeah, it's, it's pretty cool. But, you know, Steinberg as a whole has been very cool at integrating stuff. I mean, whether, whether it be Rewire, they were the early adopters of Rewire. And yep. so on. that was really cool with the Rewire. I remember stuff. that. Mm -hmm. I remember back in the day, like the, the first VST, like VST24 or something, where you could select WaveLab to be your editor. Mm -hmm. and so if you double clicked on a wave file inside of, of Cubase, it would open up WaveLab. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, so it's just, you know, it's kind of part of their whole ether to do that, to do this cooperative, you know, thing in, in one host. So it's pretty cool. It's, I know it's so cool. The first time I ever saw the uh, spectrograph in show up, you know, in, in Cubase, I was like, OK, here we go. This is this is the way, you know, this is the way things should be. That's the state of the art. And so um, I guess <clears throat> that's about it for now. And I want to say thank you so much for putting these clips together for us. I understand this is a really busy time right before the holidays. And um, uh, you pulled this together for us so fast and uh, you were so great to work with. I want to thank you, especially at this time of year, um, for giving us the opportunity to give our user base, our fan base, uh, one more one more shot of something cool, you know, before the end of the year. And then uh, we'll roll over into next year and start it all over again. Once again, thank you so much. I appreciate your time so much. And um, hats off to 2022 and have a great holiday. Uh, I heard that you're going to be doing some editing over the holidays. <laughs> yeah. You make hay while the sun is shining, my friend. You know That's how it is. That's right. Okay. If somebody yeah. wants some commercials, then they're going to have commercials. That's <laughs> superb. Okay. Thanks again. And we're signing off now. So take care. Peace out. And uh, bye. See you next year. All right. Everybody take care. Be well. Bye. Bye-bye.
thanks for watching this video. Spectralayers Pro 9 delivers new levels of speed, precision, power, and control. If you found this video helpful, please hit the like button and subscribe to the Steinberg channel.